Hello there and welcome to another Atlassian Cloud Changes. And today's video, we're going to go through the changes from January 15th to January 22nd. So let's jump into the, the blog post and to see what kind of new things Atlassian have for us this week. So here we are now in the Atlassian uh, Cloud Support blog post uh, for the Cloud Changes January 15th to January 22nd, 2024. So let's start by jumping to the first. So let's see what we have. Create new. No, let's see. We had one before this one. Sorry. This sometimes happens. It jumps from the first one all the way down to the second one. I don't know. Uh, probably me doing something wrong. But let's see. The first thing that happens then is manage your product data from one central location. So what they are doing is then they're creating a new data management page in the Atlassian administration and that have a collection of features that helps you manage your data, basically. Copy, store, and organize, and maintain. So uh, right now, or what is rolling out now is that you can now have two things, basically. So you have copy product data and sandbox. So you can manage those two in this area. So now you will be able to find and manage your sandbox and your copy product data. And so you, what you do is then you go to settings, data management, and there you will now find the information that on this new page that we have. So this is good, I guess, and I'm guessing they will expand on this one. And I assume that this is first step uh, to actually be able to not your copy product data and manage your sandbox, but maybe even handling things like your backup, or if you want to have in the future, um, maybe even having things like privacy things so you can anonymize or you can remove uh, user data from this one. This would be a good change and it would be good also from GDPR perspective. You can manage your data in that way. So this is a good change. So now then we're going to down to, and this one, eh, I think this one was uh, Last week we talked about this one, but this one was from conference, if I'm not mistaken correctly. And now they are presenting this one also for Jira. So as you remember from last week, uh, what we can do now do is we can use the create command, uh, so the slash command and create. And uh, so you can create Jira issues, uh, or you can create Confluence pages uh, directly from where you are. So this is one is also quite nice. Uh, I haven't actually tried it that much. Um, but I like uh, the functionality. And let's see, organization domains UI improvement. And uh, this one is then for, uh, if we go to customers and then selecting the organization for that list. Uh, and now you can add uh, people to the organization and you can search for existing customers through their email uh, or their display name. And before we needed to know the exact email address. So this one is now a change from before, apparently, uh, or according to this. So now you can have partial emails or you can have the name. Uh, so that way we can, uh, or the display name rather, it's important that we differentiate from display name and actual name because display name does not have to be the name. Uh, but this one is uh, kind of nice. And you also have the edit organization name, remove organization from project and delete organization. And those have been moved to a more actions menu. Uh, so you will need to find those three dots uh, so you can actually find those. They are not gone. They just uh, move them around a little bit. Let's see, what do we have next? The next one then will be automation, create sprint action. And so what you can do now is uh, you can use the Atlassian automation and this one is for Jira. And so what you can do is you can have different rules to say when this one is done, you can create a new sprint. So this one can be good. Uh, so for example, you can have it on manual trigger. So you just click to create a new, uh, new sprint whenever you want to. Uh, or you can have it so, for example, if, if a certain event happens, uh, if you create, for example, a new I don't know uh, what what scenario you can have to what you want to automate, create new. Uh, maybe you want to have an action that you can trigger that will create uh, an annual plan, for example. I often use the Kanban setup rather than Sprint. Uh, but if you want to use the Sprint view and you want to have iterations that are monthly, so January to December, 
Uh, then you can create an, an automation for that one and just spit out 12 uh, sprints and they will be named in January to December if you want that. So this one is kind of nice and so I have to try this one out and see what kind of use case we can have for it. If you have another use case for creating sprints, let me know. And then we have the same thing that we had last week and I think that one was for Confluence and this one is now for Jira. Uh, so what happens is and that the sidebar will now behave a little bit differently depending on if you are on a small screen or if you have zoomed in. So uh, what happens is if the sidebar is, uh, or if the screen is smaller than 768 pixels, or if you have zoomed in to 200% or more, then the, uh, the sidebar will collapse and it will no longer uh, open on uh, when you hover over it with your cursor. So you need to click on it to actually open it. So this one is a nice change for people that are working on smaller devices, or if you are the kind of person that don't like to have it in full view, eh, but rather you have it in a, in a smaller window. In the screen. So this one is nice. Let's see, SLA time formats consistently with locality. I'm pretty sure we had this one last week as well. Uh, so um, what they have done then is the date and time formatting for SLAs did not match the formatting of other display dates and times. So basically they had two timed objects and it seems like now they either have merged them into one or they have at least aligned them so they are the same. Uh, so what happened before is that you can have uh, the SLA could look a little bit weird depending on what setting you had on your personal profile. So you could have a mismatch then if you were, for example, in the US and the SLA or the locality for the time in general for your project or for your Atlassian setup is for Europe, for example. But now they have matched this one together so it's consistent uh, with the locality. So depending on what you set in your profile, the SLAs will now match that. So let's see, we move over to your service management. Uh, anyone, add anyone as a stakeholder, no agent license needed. I think we talked about this one last week as well. Uh, so basically what this one means is that we can now add people uh, as stakeholders, which is a new role, and they will then get different, um, different permissions also, depending on that role. So this one, I think, I don't know anyone who has not added this one um, manually anyway as a role in their Jira setup. Uh, everyone usually have this one, but now they are now building it into the system because it's so normal uh, or so common that you have this. Uh, so this is a good change. So the way this one works is that you can now assign a stakeholder uh, to a product role. And uh, so you do that in your service management through the directory and you can now invite and new users and or assign existing users as stakeholders. So they will be given then the permissions that you set for them. Uh, so you can then uh, have stakeholders coming in, even if they don't have a license, they can still be in there and see what you're doing. So you don't have to provide them a license that they will basically never use, uh, or and you don't have to print out a bunch of things or put it on PowerPoints. You can just say, go in and watch. This is live and this is how we are working at the moment. So this is a very good change. I like this. User usage tracking for features. And this one is now for assets. And uh, this is now uh, uh, tracking all how many objects you have or how many schemas. Uh, so what you can do then is you can go to the settings. Uh, and this is now for, uh, for products. So you go to settings and products, and then under your service management, you have feature usage. And then you will have something called assets there, uh, a tab, and then you will see then the, uh, the number of object schemas and object and schema objects. So you can see how, if you are close to the, what do we have now? 3 million, I think, uh, objects that you can have in assets before um, it starts to go off some alarm bells. But this is good if you if you're not if you have a very large set of assets or many schemas if you're using it for many things, and you want to just very quickly see how many schemas do we actually have before you instead of jumping into assets and tabbing through uh, to see it, 
and also get an overview of roughly how many objects do we actually have uh, within our asset schemas. So I like that one. It also say that you can select virtual agent uh, if you don't have the asset tab. Uh, I'm assuming that is uh, only if you don't have the assets tab. Um, but select virtual agent for the number of assisted conversation and conversations. Oh, sorry, that is a separate functionality. Oh, they mixed it a little bit here. Uh, yeah, so you can also see uh, on the virtual agent then the number of assisted conversation and conversations. And this uh, I have to check because this is data that probably want to have some statistics on. Uh, so we probably want to see more than just the numbers. Uh, we might want to see how many percentage of our tickets are assisted conversations, for example. Um, but I need to check that one out. I, I didn't see that they, they mixed it, but it makes sense. They have multiple uh, tracking for features. So this one could be nice. Uh, it depends on how many features they will actually build into this one. And I guess that depends on us. What kind of feedback do we give? Um, but yes, if you want to, to easily see how you're doing, how many uh, assets, objects you have, and also how many assisted conversations you have, then this could be a good place for you to check. So it's on the settings, up in the right corner, and then go to products, service management, and feature. Or if you go to products, virtual agent, and assisted conversation, and conversations. Another good change. Year work management, I'm 100% sure we had this one last week, and this is that they have more background colors, and this is not new this week. And they went from, if memory serves, they went for eight, from 18 to 36, or if it was 19 to 36. Uh, so now you have a few more uh, color options. And uh, last week I also said I don't understand uh, the reason for having fixed colors, instead of giving us uh, the ability to add whatever color we want. If you want to see that rant, go back and check last week's video for that. Let's move over to Confluence. And they have the same then, the automation to create a sprint action. And in Confluence, it could be a part of the planning process, I guess. So if we put something on a particular page, like a label, we could trigger a new sprint for it, I guess. And again, come up with your own suggestions for how to use this one. So I can learn more from your experiences. Space permissions get some look and feel improvements. And I made a video for this one. Uh, so what, what they are doing is uh, they are changing the UI. Uh, so instead of having this long list of every permission that you have, they have now split it up into multiple ones that you can now tab through. And uh, so uh, this one is quite nice. I really like this one. But if you want to learn more about this one, you can go to my video and I will place it up. Let's see, up there, probably. And we are back at the top again. So this was all the changes that came out now then on January 15th to January 22nd. Uh, so if you enjoy these kind of videos, um, please subscribe to the channel. I will have these out every week unless I I'm sick or I'm out of town or unable to do them. But I will make sure that every video comes out uh, eventually. This one, for example, is a little bit late because I was sick last week. But that was all that we had for this video. So until next time, I hope you will have an awesome day and a great week.